You're listening to the weekly partial podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramah Beit Shemesh Israel 5783 2023. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Truma. And we have the Jewish people being asked by Hashem, Yikhali Truma, to bring for me a donation, to bring for me, or to bring to me, or on my behalf, to bring all of the different components. The Jewish people are so excited. Can you imagine? Imagine if we're going to build a base Amigdash. Imagine HaKadosh Baruch Hu asks us to donate to our base Hamikdash today. How excited we would be. I'd like to share with you two pieces in the Medrash. Actually, there's it's two sections in the Medrash with a lot of pieces, a few different ideas. Beautiful ideas, deep ideas. Let's study this together and see what we can take out personally. What is the message of this Medrash? V'yikhuli truma. Hadahu dichsiv. So the first idea, of course, is when we speak about the truma, when we speak about the that which is being built, that which is being constructed, the first thing that the Torah speaks about is the Arun Habris, the Ark of the Covenant, which contained a Seris Hadibris. And classically in Jewish thought, the Arun represents the Torah, represents the teachings the instructions for how we behave and how we interact and what our relationship looks like with Hashem. So the Medrash, this seems to be the Pshat the Medrash, starts off, The Medrash here talks about the idea of the fact that Torah was taught to us by Moshe Rabbeinu. Very uh, deep foundational classic idea. The Torah, the word Torah, so we know the word Torah, if we take the gematria of the word Torah, so the number is 611. And classically, we know that the Torah is composed of 613 commandments. So the number is 611. So the the, the time So Torah is only 611. Moshe Rabbeinu gave us 613, so where's the other two? Ela Ami Rabbanon, the sages say, Anaychi velo yiyeh lecha mi pi ha-gvura shema'un. So there's a dual aspect. Tayret si velo no Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu taught us the entire Torah, 613 commandments. But at the same time, Tayret is only 611. What's the other two? It's the first two commandments that were spoken by Hashem, spoken by God, directly to the Jewish people, and not through an intermediary, not through Moshe Rabbeinu. The tough Reish Yod Aleph, Omar Lam Moshe, the other 611 were said by Moshe Rabbeinu. When I learned this with my son Moshe Dov, so we both noticed that really it's it's all 613 were given through Moshe, but only 611 were given through Moshe, because two were given directly. So what's the idea? The idea is that Moshe Rabbeinu, th- there is a direct, there's a directness of these two, of the first two commandments. But there's also something that's given over by Moshe within those two as well. There's a dual aspect. We need to understand that. I'm not going to really get into that so much, but there's a directness. There's a directness of the Torah. V'yikhuli truma, as we're going to see the theme throughout this Medrash is, that there's a taking of Hashem. There's a direct relationship that we gain with Hashem at the essence of the Torah. The beginning of the Torah, Hashem the first commandment that Hashem speaks to the entire Jewish people is, I am Hashem your God, it's direct. Don't have idols, don't have any other gods before me. There's a directness, there's a direct relationship that we have. <clears throat> Let's see how that idea is reflected in the next part of the Medrash. Suppose it says, Torah Tzivah Lano Moshe, Meirasha Kihilas Yaakov, which means it's, a, it's an inheritance for the for the congregation of Jacob. Altakre my Rasha Ela Yerusha. Says the Medrash, a my Rasha, which means something that's given over, it's a Yerusha, it's an inheritance. What is the concept of an inheritance? Yerusha li Israel Oilam. The Torah, which man which is a manifestation of the relationship that we have with God, the Torah represents something which is a it's bequeathed to me it's it's something which i have from my parents it's something that 
I have rights to birthrights. It's a birthright, the Torah. Access to Hashem, access to a relationship with God is a birthright. Let's see, Mashal ben Malachim, says the Medrash, it's a mashal, it's an analogy to a prince. That he was captured, he was kidnapped when he was young, and he was brought to a faraway city, faraway land. Even if many years have passed, he was captured when he was a young child. He was a, he's a prince. Even if many decades have passed, he can always come back to the palace and say, I'm the long, the long lost prince. He always has access to the Torah. He, he has a birthright. He's born a prince. He might have been raised by the kidnappers. He might have been raised by people who were uncouth, who were vulgar, who were not the kind of people you want to hang out with. But he always has a birthright. He can always go back to who he is. His, at his essence, he's a prince. <laughs> Says the Medrash, a very interesting thing. Let's say I have a Torah scholar who studied for years. He became somebody who is erudite, who is steeped in wisdom, in Torah wisdom. And at some point, for whatever reason, he was perishment at Torah. He left. He had to go out. He got involved in, in business matters. Even after a number of years, even decades, he wants to come back. In a bush. He has nothing to be afraid of. He has nothing to be embarrassed about. He can walk back into the palace just like that prince. Because he's saying, I'm, going, I'm coming back to my birthright. The Torah is a birthright. The Torah is something that by studying it, we, we become Tamid Chachamim, we become Torah scholars, we become steeped in the Torah's wisdom. And even if we take a break, so to speak, it could be a short break, Hopefully not a long break, but even if it is a long break, we can always come back. The Torah is our birthright. Very interesting. So that's the Moirasha. It's something that we inherit. It's something that we have rights to, no matter what. And I would say it's something that we also resonate with, because the, the depth of it is something that we know deep down in our hearts. It's something that we know to our core. And and as a good as a beautiful part of that analogy, you know, think about it. The the prince comes back, and he's and he's just like the kidnappers. He's uncouth. He's, but but at his core, there's a nobility, a nobility within him. The prince is still a prince. He doesn't lose his princeliness. It's there. It needs to be cultivated again. It needs to be brought out again. But it's still there. The Torah wisdom is, is something that when we resonate with the Torah, it resonates inside of us in a deep way with that princely aspect of ourselves. Davar Acher, another explanation, Meirasha. Pasuk says, Meirasha, Alti di Kaira Meirasha la Meirasa. As we said before, the Torah is about a manifestation of the relationship that we have with Hashem. It's our Arusa. The Torah is our, the, the one that we're engaged to, the woman that we're engaged to. What does it mean? What happens when a person is engaged to be married? So there's a relationship with the wife. But there's also a relationship with the father-in-law, right? The, the, the new son-in-law who's marrying this woman. Really, this woman is a product of her home, of her household. And so the, the father, the, the future father-in-law... So he is now going to have a relationship with his son-in-law. Let's say the, the father-in-law is a very chashiv person, a very important person, a great Torah scholar, let's, let's say. So the son-in-law, the relationship that he's going to have with his father-in-law is obviously going to be different when they're engaged, when he's engaged to his wife, than when they're married. Why? At the beginning, so the, son, the son-in-law comes to the, the home of the father-in-law. We're talking about the Torah as the, as the wife. So think about it in the sense that the Torah is the wife and the father-in-law is HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as it were, it's God. So we're, we're, we're entering into a relationship with this father-in-law, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with God, through his Torah. Now, 
when the son-in-law comes and he's engaged, so he has to visit the home. But once he marries, once he marries the daughter of this man, so then the father-in-law comes to his house when he wants to see his daughter. Right? In the same way, before the Torah was given to the Jewish people, before we had actually received, before it entered into our home, so to speak, so Moshe went up, right? So Moshe, who was our messenger, so he had to go to the, he had to go up to heaven in order to receive the Torah. He had to go there as a, as a, like a son-in-law who is only engaged. What does the Torah say? A few psukim later, right? A few psukim later. Where are we here? We're in. No, I'm sorry. This is. Uh, yeah, it's a few psukim later, right? We say the Torah says to us, the purpose of creating this mishkan, of creating this tabernacle, is so that I should come to dwell in your midst. God says. The Torah, which represents the relationship, the Mishkan, which is which houses the Luchis Habris, it houses the Torah itself inside of this Ark of the Covenant, from which the the divine revelation comes down into the world between the Kruvim. The Kruvim represent this relationship between us and Hashem. So now Hashem, instead of us having to go to to Him, as it were, Hashem comes down to us. Be kuli truma. You're taking Hashem through the Torah, through the Mishkan, through the Tabernacle, right? And Beis Hamikdash, of course, the Temple itself is also a representation of this idea, the the Lishkas Hagazis, the place where the Sanhedrin sat, the greatest Torah scholars, the place where we would come, we would bring all of our questions, all of our halachic questions, all of our divrei rivois bishaarecha all of the fights that we have with each other, that we need to be resolved in money matters, etc. So, where is it? It's brought to the base Hamikdash. That's where the, that's where the Sanhedrin sat. That's where we would go. All of the questions, all of the Torah questions were brought onto the Harabayas, onto our holy mountain. Right? That represented the place where Hashem came down and revealed Himself revealed himself in the minds of the Torah scholars. But that's where the presence of Hashem was seen and was possible to access. So through the Torah, Hashem comes and visits us, as it were. So, you are taking Hashem by creating this house, this home, this place for God's presence to dwell. Here says the Medrash another explanation. Now the Medrash tells us another aspect of this relationship. What does it look like? The Torah is exclusive. Exclusively bound to the Jewish people. The Jewish people have a unique relationship with the Torah. And it's not to say, of course, that those who are not part of the people of Israel cannot access it also through the Jewish people, right? It says, The house of Hashem is a place of prayer for everyone. But there's a unique relationship. Who is allowed into Lifnaiv Lifnim? Who is allowed into the Holy of Holies? Who is allowed into the Azara? Who is allowed into the Beis HaMikdash itself? It's the Jewish people. Who is allowed into the Shekhinah? Who has the most direct relationship? We are the ones who are Me'orasim. We are the ones who are engaged to God, who are engaged to the Torah. Verse says in Hosea chapter 2, Perak Bey's Puzzle Chafalaf, I am wedded to you forever. How do we know that the Torah is like a, a married woman in relationship to the nations of the world. It speaks about the Torah. It speaks about the fire. It speaks. Pasuk says, My words are like fire. And when it comes to fire, it's something that can't be touched. It's not possible to have coals on your lap without the, the coals causing the. the 
bege, causing the garment to be burned. There's a unique and holy relationship, red, kedushin. What is kedushin? Marriage. What is it? Kedushin means meyuchad It's It's designated. This person is now designated only to me. When a person gets married, no one else is allowed to access that relationship. It's holy. In the same way the Torah is holy, and the relationship with Hashem is holy to the Jewish people. Dover Acher. So once again, before the Dover Acher, once again, the Torah is something special. It's unique to the Jewish people. The Torah is something that, through which we have a direct relationship. Hashem comes to us, as it were. The Torah is something that is Yerushalayim. It's, it's our birthright. It's a relationship with Hashem that's unbreakable. Even if we step away, we can always come back. And it's a direct relationship that we experienced as a nation directly, hearing the words directly from Hashem. It's, it's personal. The Torah is personal. Very interesting. Another deep important point about the person how how personal the Torah is. It says, they will take from me a truma, right? But then it says, call ish libo. Each individual. First it starts in plural and then it goes down to an individual, an individual level. He says, Hashem says, let them bring for me a truma, a, a contribution. Let them partake in creating this home, as it were, for God, for God's presence. But then it says, each individual whose heart has that feeling, whose heart wishes to donate. So, can, can, can the Jewish people do this? Asked Moshe Rabbeinu. Hashem, is it possible for the Jewish people to create a place that your presence will dwell? It seems like a task which is beyond the scope of a human being. Moshe Rabbeinu said, can the entire Jewish people do it? It seems like a task that's too much for them. Hashem says, not only can the entire Jewish people do it, every individual has the ability on their own to create a space that I will dwell. Every is called Ish, each and every one of us has the ability to have a direct relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to sense Hashem in our lives, to understand what it is that He wants from us as an individual. We all have that ability. Amar Abanan, Af Baman, Shal Yoyar Yisrael, Ha Yoyar Dis Boi Avanam Taivis and Margolias. This is also a beautiful idea. It's a classic idea. It's well known. That where did the gems come from? It says that the Nisim, the princes of the Jewish people, the great leaders, they were able to give to the to the Mishkan. They gave certain gems. Where did they get those gems from? So the Medrash tells us that when the Mon fell, the, the holy manna, which would fall from the heavens, the special bread. So there would be precious gems that would fall alongside the mun. And the greatest of them would collect them. They would collect the gems. And they would put them away. You should know this is true. The Pasuk says that they brought another um, another contribution in the morning. What is Why does it say in the morning? What they brought in the morning and not in the afternoon? We see the words Babaikar also in the morning in regards to the Duman. So they brought something that happened in the morning from something that happened in the morning. They brought something in the morning that happened in the morning. And that means that there were precious gems that came along with the Man. The Pasuk says the Nasim brought, the princes brought these precious gems. They brought their donation. So there's a precious gem there's a unique gem which represents our chilek in the Torah. It represents, you know, how we, what our portion is, what our understanding is. My Rosh Hashiva says, based on those who went before him, my pair says, the most important understanding of the Torah is your understanding of the Torah. 
how you relate to it. That's our offering. What we get, those gems that come with the man, that come with our sustenance. It's not just the bread upon which we live, upon which we depend. It's the words of Hashem that gives us life. So the words of Hashem, our understanding of God's will for us, that's a precious gem that we offer back to Hashem. That represents our personal relationship with Hashem. No two people are alike. No two people understand the Torah the same way. No two people have the same avoid, they have the same way of serving Hashem. Last point in the Medrash. Rav Tevimi says that when it was time for Yaakov Avinu, for Jacob, to pass on from the world, he called his sons. Jacob, talking about a story that happened 210 years before. Jacob is about to pass on from the world. He says to his children, you should know that God is going to to say to your children, he's going to ask your great-great-grandchildren to create a mishkan, to create a sanctuary. Hashem is going to ask them to create this place for him to dwell, for his divine presence to dwell. I want you to be ready for this. Have everything ready for it now already. God will be with you. That's what the Pasuk says. Jacob says to his sons, what, what does it mean Hashem will be with you? What? Hashem wasn't with them, uh, you know, when Yaakov was there? No, heaven forbid. There's going to be a, a moment in the future that Hashem is going to request of you to create a place, a space for His Divine Presence to dwell in your midst. As the verse says, you shall make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell in your midst. Very interesting. There were those who remembered what Jacob had commanded. He had said to them, have everything ready. Right? This goes back to the Yerusha. It's something that even if we forgot, we still have an opportunity. There are some people who held on to, to the preparations that Jacob asked them to make. They didn't forget. There were others who didn't. They didn't remember, and they had to make new preparations. Some people brought that which they already had. I'm sorry. They brought. There were some who brought something new, something new that they had received now. Let's say the the, the gems that they found in the mun. And there were some who had saves for generations from the times of Yaakov, even from Jacob's time. The preparations that were made 210 years earlier. There were those who had found, they had stuff with them, right? Where did they get Tcheles and Argaman? These are special wool that's dyed blue, that's dyed purple. How do you get that? It's not something that you can just get. It's not something that, that you get in the midbar. You can't get it in the wilderness. It's something that you had to have from before. But it was prepared from before. Where did they get the cedars, the cedar wood that they would use in the Mishkan? It was something that was prepared from before, from the times of Yaakov Avinu. Bottom line message of this, the end of the Medrash, and really the theme that runs through it all is the Torah is something that the the Torah is something that creates a relationship between us and Hashem, that we through which we create a space where His Divine Presence will dwell. The Torah is that place. The Mishkan is that place. And soon, Mitzvah Hashem, the Beis HaMikdash, will be that place. And how do we create that? We might create that from something that's Yerushalon, or something that we have from our parents, from our grandparents, our great-grandparents. It might be something that we 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 remember. But it might be something that we forgot because we were, so to speak, kidnapped by the kidnappers, but we're still princes. We're still connected. That relationship is still possible at any time. We can find it within ourselves. We can look for the diamonds that Hashem is sending to us today. And sometimes we can find a treasure trove that comes from our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, and sometimes we need to create the treasure trove ourselves.
But it's all about a unique and personal relationship with Hashem. It's all about accessing the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence. And it's possible, no matter where we are, whether we have it already or whether we have lost it and we can, we can always come back to it. I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us that we should be able to recognize the treasure, the awesome treasure box, treasure chest, which is the Ark of the Covenant, the Arna Habris, the Torah. Hashem should help us to develop that relationship, to search for it in the past, and to find it in the present, to find all of the diamonds and all of the precious gems, return them to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so that God will come down and bless us and dwell within our midst. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.